kind of vibing with it right now. I'm not going to lie. In fact, I'm really vibing with it now. Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm going crazy. So hello gamers and welcome back to another video. Phantom Forces has finally had a big update. And as you know, I made my comeback video yesterday and today I'm gonna be covering everything that happened in that update. It was a couple of weeks ago, but it is a pretty new update and nobody has made a full video on the changes. Yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing is that a couple of guns have had their velocity increased to a ridiculous amount. Oh my gosh, that is loud. The AK-12 and the AN-94 both have a muzzle velocity of 2950, almost 3000 studs per second, which is really crazy. Oh my gosh, I forgot they ruined this gun, bro. Look at this. That's disgusting. Anyway, that means the bullets essentially just teleport to people. That is such fast velocity. It's actually kind of crazy. The Scar L actually had a kind of an interesting buff. It has a little bit less velocity, but it has slightly more fire rate as well. So it has 650 instead of 625. This is going to make it kind of feel like a Scar PDW because the Scar PDW had that 650 and this one had 625. So it felt like slightly different and now it's going to feel exactly the same. But man, that velocity difference, I don't know about that. It's not like the velocity was amazing on this gun anyway. It was 2500, which is good, but now 2300 is just weird. I don't know why, because the M16s have like so much more and they're both just like 556. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's not like the Scar L is a bad gun. Honestly, this is probably going to be an update that most people are going to enjoy. Oh my gosh, I cannot hit it. The AUG A1 got a pretty big change. And honestly, the AUG A1 is already a pretty good gun, but the velocity was increased and the reload is reduced. Yeah, the reload is really nice on this gun now. I don't think the AUGs really needed buffs, especially the AUG A3, but we'll talk about that, I guess. But yeah, the AUG A1, really, really good gun. And now it has laser beam velocity, which is nice for sure. Okay, really wasn't a gun that really needed a buff, but you know, we, we take it, we take it. AUG A1 9mm, which is the AUG A1 Para, now does 20 damage at range once again. It has really, really bad muzzle velocity, but that was something it already had. But basically, if you want a three shot up close and still a five hit kill at range with bad velocity and a smaller magazine, this is definitely, it, it's still good. Like it makes your fire rate higher by a little bit and it gives you even better recoil as you can see, and better up close performance. I don't know which one you should use. Probably default AUG A1, but this is really good if you're going only close range. The AUG A1 has a really good four hit kill range, and wow, and this is going to really cut into that. The M16A4 assault rifle, which is a gun that a lot of people don't like, but it's actually become pretty good. Now has layered recoil, which should improve the recoil, yeah. And it also has less burst delay. That is so unfortunate to spawn there, wow. Back in like 2018, the M16A1 was probably the best in the game. Uh, Actually, M16A4, not A1. And there used to be this thing where essentially any gun that had burst had better recoil by default and they removed that from the burst weapons and it kind of killed this gun a little bit luckily they've actually buffed the recoil again so it does actually have really good recoil again because yeah with bad recoil it was not that great it wasn't really that bad recoil but with the burst weapon you kind of need to hit like the whole burst also it has an interruptible burst now so sometimes you fire like two bullets i don't know how the interruptible burst works not gonna lie i think honestly it might be one of the best assault rifles in the game now which is really nice like yeah you might have to hit a second burst a lot of the time but the ammo conservation is super good the recoil is really good next up we have the m16a1 which is a really weird gun now so basically it starts at 750 rpm and then heats up to 950. So it used to have 950 by default. Now it takes a second to get to 950, but that also means that at the beginning, your recoil control is a little better, which is kind of interesting. I don't think this is a buff to it. I think this is definitely a nerf to it. And it was really, really good before. So I do understand why they're nerfing it. It does have more velocity though, which is nice. And also a very interesting change is the M855 conversion now has 800 to 950 instead of 750. But this is still the bad recoil conversion. And yeah, this is a conversion I never really liked in the first place. And I think this with the heat up it's gonna feel weird because the recoil is already pretty high the m16a1 recoil was honestly like so overhyped like people thought it was bad i didn't really think it was that bad but the m855 recoil is weird and with the heat up i, I don't like it anyway so i'm definitely not going to be using that conversion but i wasn't anyway i literally have 13 kills with it. however next up the all k2 i don't know why but they buffed this gun again it now has 750 rpm instead of only 700 it now has increased velocity and it has a faster reload by about 0.3 seconds i don't like the new sight mount on it i don't know when they changed that the faster rpm and the fact that it's already a three hit kill i don't know why they're giving 
giving this gun another buff. It was already really good. I'm not really complaining, but at the same time, I feel like I'm going to die to this thing a ton because this might be the new meta AUG. I'm not going to lie. Another interesting thing about this is the 7.62 conversion on the AUG A2, which I already kind of like. I got 100 kills on it, which is pretty surprising. I didn't realize I had that many, but it makes the gun a two hit kill headshot, three hit kill pretty far, and a four hit kill torso all ranges. But it gave it a 20 round mag and a lot more recoil and less bullet velocity as well but now essentially they've given it a 30 round mag they've given it a free extended magazine instead of reducing your capacity from 30 to 20 which i feel like was a pretty good change for the 762 conversion i think conversions changing magazine size is usually a pretty fun thing but they decided you know what it's not broken enough because i thought it was pretty good already they have given the 762 conversion a little more recoil uh, which is definitely a good change but i think 762 on the aug 2 is a really good option it does have more recoil now but it's not like a ton of recoil the damage is really good and the reload time is good and the magazine capacity is good and the fire rate is good it's really just oh well it has some recoil to it but i don't really find the recoil to be that crazy especially like just don't use it on a map like this and you're good the default hog a2 you can run on any map because the recoil is so good as you can see the recoil isn't great you know but it's good enough for sure overall i'm not a big fan of this change i think the hog a2 buff is it's interesting. I don't think it was necessary, but I don't think they needed to make this one have 30 rounds. I felt like 20 rounds was just like cool, you know? I really like when a gun just doesn't have a large magazine, so you really have to make all your bullets count. So the FAMAS has had its velocity increase from 2500 to 3100, which makes sense. It is a bullpup. They've increased the reload speed and they've added back the Romanian grip, which was an, a very, wow, I already have 84 kills on it. That's really nice. They added back my kills for it. That's super cool that they kept that in the game somehow. They removed the grip, but kept my kills on the grip. And then when they uh, added it back, I got my kills back. But basically, the remaining grip was an attachment on not only the FAMAS, but other guns that made some guns really OP because the recoil control it gives you for some types of recoil is just ridiculous. And they removed it on the FAMAS and the Beowulf ECR, but apparently they added it back to the FAMAS, which is essentially just buffing the gun. If you have the grip on the gun, or if you're going to use the gun a lot, or if you have kills on the gun already and you want a really good grip, run the remaining grip because, yeah, it essentially just makes the gun a perfect accuracy laser beam which is cool and all but also really unnecessary I... die 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 <laughs> what i didn't get the kill there that's crazy yeah famas is going to be really good now ak-47 did have its velocity increase alge 3 also had its velocity increase which if you didn't know the alge 3 was already an amazing gun it has 720 rpm it's a three to a five hit kill and the recoil is really good so now not only is the recoil really good but the velocity is so high that you can land shots from nearly any range which you already could so it doesn't really matter that much but i do think a velocity increase to this gun it makes sense with the other guns in the class getting changes like all the augs got faster velocity so i don't think any of the augs were in need of a buff that's all i'm gonna say there's not really a recoil control aspect to this game but as you can see even if there was this would be one of the guns where you wouldn't need to do anything because i'm not pulling down or anything i'm just shooting at the guy and they are dying the ak-74 got a little buff it now has increased velocity and a faster reload time of 2.3 seconds Okay, and it does have a new animation, which is kind of nice. The AKM and the AK-103 got faster velocity. They're doing a lot of velocity changes, which is interesting, but mostly increases. The TAR-21 also got a faster reload. The TAR-21 is sad because I don't see anyone really using this gun anymore. It used to be really good, and uh, now it's, you know, it, it, it's a gun. It is definitely one of the guns in the game. I think the hit markers would be louder if I was running duplex, though. TAR-21 is really an underrated gun. I don't really find it to be that broken but i don't really find it to be that bad either and i do think the reload speed on it wasn't that great so the fact that it is a lot faster is definitely nice the type 88 got a buff and people are saying this gun is really good now you got better velocity by default the 30 round magazine does have a slower reload but not by a ton and the 762 got faster velocity better recoil faster reload speed and a new reload animation 762 was that is a lot better. Wow. If you didn't know, 7.62 on this gun used to be like the best assault rifle at one point. Not for very long, there's been a lot of guns that have been the best assault rifle and then they get nerfed and this has been one of them. But then they completely changed the 7.62. The fact that it has better recoil now is definitely going to help it because it was... It's not great. It's still not great recoil. If guy goes prone like that, I can't hit him. The C7A2 got kind of a buff. I don't know why. It has... 30 damage instead of 29 and it has a little bit overall like changed recoil i think i think it's better recoil i don't know like the c7 doesn't really have any recoil to begin with c7a2 is a gun that it was so insanely broken it's still really really good but man it is so boring to use but back when it was like insanely broken like unbelievably broken i got like 2,000 kills on it super quick then i just never used it again and as you can see like it 
didn't really need any changes. I think it was already in a spot of just being a really good gun. The ranges used to be insane, and um, now they're not really as great, so that's why I'm not really killing people in as many bullets as I normally would. But yeah, I think it's already good. Oh my gosh, that pistol sucks. It did improve the reload time of 20 tac. Now I have 3,000 exactly kills on this. It improved the reload time of it, so it's 1.5 seconds, which is really, really fast. It used to be 1.7, so it's a little faster. It also improved the damage of the LSW barrel and the ranges and reduced the RPM by a little bit, but improved the recoil. The LSW barrel is, uh, like, it is there. It is definitely there. Oh my gosh, that is loud. Yeah, the LSW barrel is essentially a slower fire rate barrel for better recoil and range, I guess. It's it's a terrible barrel, don't use it. The STG-44 got a little bit of a change as well. So it does 44 damage times 1.15. That is able to two hit kill torso, which I thought it could before, but apparently it couldn't. It got increased headshot multiplier and increased torso. It didn't have a torso multi. They must have nerfed it before. And increased velocity, but the damage at range is worse and the ranges are worse. So essentially the STG-44 is now a weapon that can two-shot up close, but isn't as good at longer ranges, but it does have better velocity and stuff, so maybe it's still pretty good at range. I don't know, the STG-44 is definitely one of the guns in the game, for sure. I still remember it getting added, and people are like, whoa, this gun is awesome, I loved having this in the game, it's so cool that we finally got the STG-44, and then it just wasn't really that interesting to most people. I think it is pretty good though, not gonna lie. I actually kind of like this version of it. I don't think I'm two-shotting people really that often. You have to hit two torso shots in a row. I might have two-shot that guy. The ranges on the 5.56 are worse. However, the multipliers are the same as before. So it still does really, really good damage um, with multipliers. It also has better velocity and better walk speed. 5.56 was already a pretty good version of the STG. I think it's probably better than the base gun, honestly. And usually I don't like to say conversions are better than the base gun, but I feel like the base gun just doesn't really fulfill a role that really is that important. And also the recoil on this gun. I don't know if they've changed it, but man, the recoil was awful before. Okay, that's with 5.56. Let's see. That's actually better, not gonna lie. I had to use AMT Terminator because it had like crazy camera recoil. It wasn't even that inaccurate. It just shook your screen so much that you had to use like alt aim. So maybe, hey man, don't don't sign me. Okay, you're dead. Finally, G11, the final assault rifle, got a better bullet velocity by quite a bit, and it is insane. The G11 is already one of the best assault rifles in the game, and the fact that now you can hit your shots way easier with it at range because it is one of those guns that you kind of need to rely on good bullet velocity. It is a very, very good gun. Honestly, I'm not good with it right now. Next up for carbines, the M4A1 does have a faster reload time, which is nice. It's not by a ton, but it's by 0.1 seconds. The M4 has a faster fire cap, faster reload speed, new layered recoil, and has better sway and better sway with the full stock. I, I don't know why. So the M4 is the burst version of the M4A1. It is honestly a pretty mid gun i'm not gonna lie the reason it's kind of mid is because it is essentially a carbine variant of the m16a4 and the m4a1 is kind of nice compared to the m16a3 because the m4a1 can three hit kill um but the m16a4 can already three hit kill and the m4 can three hit kill the minimum damage of it is 20 now which is nice so it's a three to a five hit kill with the two shot headshot which makes it honestly not too bad but i don't think i would use this over the m16a4 i don't really see a reason why it does have better fire rate but it's not like that crazy the AKU-12 and the AK-12C both have better velocity. The AK-105 has increased velocity, a faster reload, and slower empty reload. The Colt Mars, which is essentially the most nobody cares about gun ever, it got better damage by 3, so from 29 to 32, better velocity, faster empty reload, but a slower tactical reload. So this is faster. Oh wow, that is a lot faster. But the reload that you're gonna do 90% of the time, because who shoots all 30 rounds on this gun? It is such a loud gun, dude. Holy, you gotta make this gun quieter, man. It does seem a decent amount better, but yeah, I don't care about the Colt Mars. Who freaking cares about the Colt Mars? Colt SMG 633 does have a faster empty reload, but a slower tactical reload. Just make the empty faster. Don't, don't change this. Who cares about the Colt SMG? They nerfed this gun way too hard. Okay, they didn't, honestly. Like, it's still really good. But yeah, Colt SMG, it is it just one of the guns. Wow, I forgot the recoil. The MP10 has a faster reload, which is nice. MP10 got super nerfed before, but a lot faster. Pretty good. The Allgay 3 Para has lower fire rate and 
way worse velocity, but it does do 37 damage up close. Alge 3 para meta is definitely over with this one, and I'm happy about that because Alge 3 para was so dominant for so long, and they never really addressed it until now. The AKS 74U now has a multi-point damage grab, which is essentially it can go to one damage range to the next and then down. But essentially, it starts losing its damage right away, which I don't really like. It goes from 37 right away, starts going down to 33, and then goes down to 20. But it does have better velocity and a faster reload time but it does have layered recoil. Am I running? No, I can't be running 762. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about this. Main problem is the three hit kill range is really not going to be that great anymore because it is going from 37 down to 33 like immediately. It's not getting like 37 for a while, which means the two hit kill headshot range is not that far either. Although the AKS-74U is kind of an underrated gun, I'm not going to lie. It is pretty good. The reload speed on the AKV, which is the 9mm, is now insanely fast, which... Yeah, I mean, it's there. I do think that is a nice change because I feel like 9 mil before was just like not even worth using at all. So now if you're somebody who's like going for insane feeds, I feel like this is going to be a really good gun for that. Okay, it's going to lose that three shot like immediately. That's really unfortunate. They should have given it like 20 studs a three hit kill. It's literally going to three hit kill like for the first, like if you're... I'm not going to say that, actually. For, like, two studs. It's going to do it for, like, two studs. The multi-point damage graph on 7.62 is really interesting, because it's 43 down to 38. This doesn't have a torso multi, so it's going to be a three-hit kill, two-hit kill head for a decent amount of time. It's not, like, immediately losing its three-hit kill like the other ones are, which is nice. Which is funny, because I thought 7.62 is already, like, the way to go on this one. I really do like the 7.62 conversion. It's got quite a bit of recoil to it, which is uh, something I kind of like, honestly. I like high recoil guns. I don't really like the boring no recoil guns so honestly aks74u changes overall i don't know i don't know like some of them just feel stupid like the nine mil should be able to three hit kill for more than one stud you know what i mean but 762 still seems the best not gonna lie the bwc 9a got a huge buff it does way more damage now which is nice has way better range better headshot multi and a better reload speed but it does not fire nearly as fast it now has only 666 rate of fire instead of 1000 so if you're a fan of the fast firing bwc 9a all right it's it's not in the game anymore honestly i don't know i was using this for a game and i was doing all right with it like i was getting plenty of kills but i don't feel like i was really enjoying it or thinking it was really anything too special it feels pretty generic now with this the semi-auto conversion has 750 and the burst conversion has 730 but yeah the auto is still the way to go because nobody's going to use this as a burst weapon i don't know but then we have everybody's favorite the 5-0 its fire rate has been increased from 650 to 800 that's obviously only for the non-full auto but everybody uses full auto so i'm just going to keep that on the reserve ammo has been improved the reload speed is a lot faster by uh, by a ton by like 0.5 seconds and the overall camera recoil is better but it has reduced velocity the 4T5, haha, because it's 45. That has better fire rate, better damage, better range, better headshot multi. By a, it has a two times headshot multi now and a faster reload, but it does have reduced ranges and stuff. Honestly, that with a two times headshot multi, what is that making it do? Like 90 damage headshot up close? Kind of insane. That velocity. Wow, that velocity is bad. What What is the bullet velocity of it? 950 bullet velocity. That's why I was shooting like around people. Oh my gosh, that is terrible. It's actually shooting like paintballs, what? It's definitely a gun. It is definitely a gun for sure. I don't think I would personally use this thing. Considering the bullet velocity is now... I mean, if you hit headshots, it is really good, but I don't know. You can kill with one headshot, one body shot, which is nice. And then the 9x19mm does have a faster fire rate as well. Much better ranges, a slower tack, but faster empty reload. But not by a ton, it's up from 1.6 to 1.7. But it does have reduced velocity. I don't know what they're doing with this velocity stuff. That is quite a bit. But let's see. It is very accurate. It reloads still really quick. I'm not gonna lie, I like the default 5.0, but I feel like all these conversions, except maybe the 45 one, are really good. Uh, 9 mil is good. That guy's just shooting me through a wall. I guess he is using M60, so overall the 5-0, um, I'm gonna go with, uh, the default ammo on this one. Not gonna lie. Aug H-Bar. The Aug H-Bar got a buff. It has better velocity, increased RPM, and a faster reload time, but it does have a little bit of changes to recoil. It should be overall, like, better recoil, because they did... Oh my gosh, the recoil sucks. What? I mean, it has high velocity and stuff. I think you just gotta burst people with it, because it doesn't start to really move around too quick. Mm, I don't know about this. 
Interesting change for sure. The Hammer IAR, aka the Scar Hammer. Now everyone's been saying, use the Muscle Booster. And do I agree? Yeah, I agree. So basically this has 650 fire rate to like 900 or whatever now. So essentially you start from a higher fire rate than you did before. And if you didn't know, this gun heats up and essentially fires faster as you continue to fire. But if you run the Muscle Booster, it has a faster starting RPM of 700 and it heats up in like four bullets. So you essentially get the maximum fire rate like right away. And even 700 is not really that bad for fire rate. So it is actually really, really good. Honestly, this probably should be the default ramp up speed, but also I can see why this would be broken if it was the default ramp up speed. It just sucked with the old ramp up where it took like eight bullets to ramp up fully. Uh, and by that point, it's either you killed the guy or you were dead. You know, like ramp up doesn't really work for extended sprays because nobody's like spraying to suppress people. They're just spraying to kill people. And yeah, you can kill people with this gun now. It's very, very good. Honestly, maybe a little bit too good. The RPK-74 got better velocity, a faster overall reload speed, which is nice, but it's not really a big change to the reload. The M19A2 multi-point damage, 54, 49, 35, 32, and faster reload time, and I think better overall recoil. Now for battle rifles, Beowulf ECR now has faster walk speed and faster reload speed. Oh wait, I like how the laser is mounted now. It's kind of nice, not gonna lie. The Scar H now has lower fire rate, but now has better long range damage, velocity, a little bit better recoil and burst damage range. So it starts dropping a little bit later. Is this gun good now? Oh my gosh, I did not know what they did to this gun's recoil. AK-12 BR now has faster reload by a lot and better velocity. And the G3 now has more velocity and the AJ-3 has more velocity. I wanna see this AK-12 BR reload. Okay, God, that is a lot better. The Mark 11 now has better overall recoil. The Dragunov SVU has been moved to the DMRs and essentially just to not go through every single change they've done to this gun, it basically does less damage. You have to hit torso shots to get the old damage from it. It has worse range, but you can fire it a lot faster. A lot of people are gonna love this SVU because yeah, it fires really, really quick. And if you just hit two torsos, it'll kill, I think all ranges with two shots, which is nice. But I'm not gonna lie, I actually don't really prefer this one. I preferred the old headshot kill range and the fact that it could two hit kill limb all ranges. This is definitely a really interesting change because it made no sense how these semi-auto guns couldn't shoot that quickly, but it also doesn't make any sense that this has the same fire rate as like the Mark 11 now. It is nice that this is finally a DMR because let's be real, it was a DMR for a very long time. But yeah, overall, I'm not gonna lie, it's an interesting change to this gun for sure. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. I think a lot of people might like it, not gonna lie. I think it is definitely a lot better for panicking in close range. Lancaster ammo on this gun also got kind of a pretty big buff. It has 200, oh my gosh, 200 fire rate on this one, which is really insane considering it had like 90 before. And it can still one hit kill torso shot up close with 200 RPM, which is like, sounds crazy, but we're gonna get into a gun that's probably better at that, which is pretty insane. And this conversion now has 10 rounds instead of five. And the SVU auto conversion also got a change. Oh my gosh, they basically made the old version of it, which is nice. It does 60 to 42. Oh my gosh, they added back old SVU auto, which is awesome because the SVU auto conversion was a conversion I used to like a lot because it did this. And then they made it like a weird like pseudo battle rifle. I'm glad they added back the old version of SVU auto because this is probably one of the most fun conversions in the game. I don't have a setup that actually improves this recoil at all but as you can see it's really fun because you actually have to control the recoil and it's really good if you do the beowulf tcr now has better recoil walk speed the scar ssr basically got the svu treatment it now has 310 rpm which is nice and the damage is actually still pretty solid it's just 47 with a 1.25 so it can still two hit kill to the torso all ranges which is Honestly, really good. I think the Scar SSR actually did get a pretty nice buff with that. Am I going to be running the Scar SSR? Probably not, but you know, it, it is there. It is definitely one of the guns in the game. I actually pre-bought the Scar SSR back in the, back in the day, dude. Okay, yeah, you can't one-shot people from that far. Normally, you would be able to because it's 160 and that was 160. I kind of preferred these guns before, but I do think the two-hitting up close is going to be a really helpful change because, yeah, you can fire faster, which means you're going to be able to two -hit kill people a lot faster and not die instantly when you fight people in close range with this gun. The intervention has faster rate of fire. However, it has reduced velocity and it can't one hit kill as far. It could one hit kill to 150 studs, but now it's 120. Watch my video from yesterday. I think I still showed off that the intervention is still an amazing gun. I think the intervention is actually better for me now because the old fire rate, I don't know. I like this new fire rate of it because it's very nice. Also, you don't have to run the straight full bolt anymore, which makes the fire rate so beautiful. Not gonna lie. 
yeah, I'm, I'm going crazy with the intervention lately, just with this setup in particular. The AWS now has a faster rate of fire, a faster reload time. However, that is not really that important on it because the main thing is this subsonic, which as you can see, this monstrosity of ranges, basically it can one hit kill torso up close, then it goes away, then comes back. Then at 240 studs, you can one hit kill limb with this gun. Yeah, it does BFG damage at that range. In fact, it does more than the BFG at that range because the BFG can't one hit kill to the limb from that range, but this can. Honestly, I don't think that the AWS subsonic is as broken as it sounds because at that range, the torso kill is nice. It is pretty good, but it has like a thousand velocity, which is no bueno. Yeah, it's going to have a lot of drop. I think it is honestly like really, really fun conversion for this gun. I think honestly, yeah, the AWS is, is insane now. Oh my gosh, that jump shot headshot was insanely good. Wow. Next up, we have the SVDS, which got the same treatment as the SVD. Yeah, you can fire it that quickly. However, the recoil is pretty bad, but it does have 280 RPM. That is so much. And yes, if you're wondering, it does not one hit kill torso as far, which is unfortunate, but I think that a lot of people are going to prefer this. Even Spirals, the guy who has 100k kills on this gun, still says it's pretty nice because, yeah, you can still like use it like you could before. It can still two shot kill body shot, one hit kill head all ranges, and it still does one hit kill torso up close, which is kind of insane. But this straight up crazy rate of fire. I think it's really good. And the Lancaster ammo is, I guess, if you want the same fire rate, but uh, basically the old torso kill range with some downsides to what, like muzzle velocity and stuff? Yeah, conversion that removes your headshot kill at range, but it does improve your damage. And also you do get the fast fire rate still. I think this is gonna be good if you're somebody who just likes to play up close with snipers only. You do have a 70 stud one hit kill range, which is basically the old one hit kill range, but you have the 280 RPM. Oh my gosh, that double wall bang. I do think the SVDS is going to be better without that. And I do think the SVDS is probably the best sniper in the game right now. I've just been preferring the intervention, but I do think the SVDS is probably the best sniper in the game. Not gonna lie. The WA 2000 is the other sniper that got a change. Essentially got a multi-point damage graph, a faster rate of fire, and a slightly better torso multi. So it does 72 times 1.35. Okay, so it still doesn't one hit kill torso. So I don't know why you would use this. Because, yeah, it has that fire rate and it has pretty good recoil. But that's still actually lower than the SVDS fire rate. I think the Wa2K is... Yeah, it, it has not been a very good gun in quite a while. Yeah, super underwhelming gun, unfortunately. They gave it kind of a buff, but it's not really that much. Secondaries. The Desert Eagle XIX, for some reason, has 400 RPM again. Insane. Insane fire rate, guys. That was such a necessary change. I mean, you can't hit anything with this 400 RPM. Just keep that in mind. But they also improved... Dude, that peak was crazy. They gave it a better one hit kill range though, which is unnecessary. So yeah, it fires faster and it has a one hit kill torso of like 50 studs or something, which is farther than it did before. So this is essentially better than the old XIX. So yeah, the XIX meta is back guys. They also did buff the executioner, but this is not going to be executioner meta. It's the XIX meta. I guess the long range damage isn't as good as the old XIX, which could two hit kill torso all ranges, but one hit kill torso range is better so i think it's probably better the machine pistol that got to change though is the tech 9 got better damage and more reserve ammo with the extended mag it still is you know it is there it is definitely a gun that works it's honestly not bad at all now which is crazy to say the tech 9 has been an awful gun for so long after it got a nerf that I think it actually might be kind of meta because now when you run the extended mag, you don't run out of bullets in like one millisecond because before it had one magazine of reserve ammo. So now it has two, which is pretty nice. The executioner also has, oh my gosh, I'm probably gonna have to turn that down. It has 350 RPM and more one hit kill range as well. Why, dude? I've always kind of hated the executioner. I've always preferred the XIX. The XIX I have 2.5 thousand kills on. But the Executioner, I have like 100. It is competitive with the XIX now, for sure. The fire it is really, really good. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of vibing with it right now. I'm not going to lie. In fact, I'm really vibing with it now. Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm going crazy with this. The fire rate on it is kind of crazy. I'm, I'm just going insane with that gun. Holy. Other than that, though, they did nerf the 6.5 Grendel conversion, which is apparently a conversion that was super broken on the 5.56 guns that replace 7.62. Uh, it gives them better damage, but a little bit less fire rate, a little bit smaller magazine, and it has this recoil that like goes up 
as it like continues firing. The C7A2 is probably the worst gun to show this off on because yeah, the C7A2 doesn't have recoil. But yeah, if there's a conversion that is supposed to improve your recoil or increase your recoil, I mean, the C7A2 is going to be the gun to um, make that increase recoil not matter. And it doesn't. So yeah, it seems to be really good still, wow. Wow, okay. This is an interesting conversion. It's basically 7.62, so like higher damage, lower velocity, higher recoil type deal. Anyways, gamers, that's going to be a super long video, unfortunately. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new. Comment down below what video should I make next. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Have a nice day.